Coming to you from a portable microphone, this is Don't Get Me Started. This is a conversation about advertising. And here is your host, freelance creative director and creative circuits department head, Dan Balser. Yes, welcome back to another episode of the podcast. Thank you so much for continuing to listen, for continuing to download these chats into your earbuds, into your earbuds. I'm your earbud. I'm your earbud. That's I, I, that works kind of. I yeah. like it. Yeah. I like it. We can be if we were doing a cooking cooking show, we could be taste buds. I like that. And um, Neil's sitting here enjoying this this really good like dark chocolate with <clears throat> like a glen de cafe, which I guess means coffee bean bits. Um, anyway, so before we get to digress too much, it's interesting. Like you've listened to this, if you listen to this podcast many times, you know that a lot of these are recorded after a forum in the library. And there's a, there's an there's a energy to it, and there's sort of a I kind of feel a little bit. I mean, full disclosure, I feel a little bit rushed sometimes recording these because I know that there's a countdown for the speakers and the guests to get to their car, to get to the airport, to get back from whence they came. This is different because today I know that Neil is sticking around, seeing friends later, and staying in Atlanta, so we don't have a time frame, and it, it feels different to me. It feels a little bit more weekend like for me right now like it's friday it's late friday afternoon i'm kind of feeling like uh catching up with a former student whom i liked when he was here and really enjoyed seeing and listening to today it's like uh one of the one of the times where i kind of felt like a almost a paternal pride oh, it's really nice. yeah it, it really yeah. really like to see neil come back and have done the things that he's done which surprised me none none did not surprise me at all to see that he was responsible for some of the funniest, best commercials on television today. He's already won this year alone, and rec- we are recording this in 2016. He's already up to like 35 major awards. If you go to Neil's website, I think it's neilwilliams.com. That's it. It's very uh, predictable. You can see memorable. Let's, there, there's a final. <clears throat> it's very memorable. Yeah, you can see the list of awards. It's just an, it's a very impressive list. I don't need to look at his resume to talk about his resume. He started off at Cole Henderson and Drake in Atlanta before he went to ad school as an intern in account management and then was kind of made into a junior copywriter. I think at that point realized that uh, that's all he was ever going to be if he didn't get a portfolio. Came to the Creative Circus, graduated in about 2006, went to YNR in New York with his um, extremely talented partner, Jason Nitty, and then uh, took a visit uh, down to Richmond, ended up meeting some people at Martin Agency and has been there for about eight years and three months at this recording the time you're listening to this, it's about eight and a half years. Um, he has, like I said, been, I would say, instrumental. I think there may be people that would argue that. Arguably instrumental in helping Martin Agency win Agency of the Year. Um, like I said, has won Lions, one show pencils, you name it. Um, an award-winning guy who who comes by it naturally. A, a, to, in my mind, a true talent, a very gifted, humble, um, respectful, thoughtful writer and uh, did some of the Geico work that you know, and I do encourage you to go to the Facebook page and where there's a link to his website, and you can look at all of his work. The Facebook page is, as it always has been, facebook.com slash DGMS podcast. Neil, welcome back to the circus. Thank you for having me. That was a lot you just threw my way. Yeah, what do you think of that? That was, I feel like a little bit of a douche, but... uh... Right, see, we just talked about that before we started recording, that like, I was complimenting Neil, complimenting you on the fact that you have kept up to date your award role mm-hmm. and I said that has to feel douchey typing it in there but like you kind of have to sell yourself yeah. don't you kind of have to sell yourself yeah a little bit a little bit it's mainly just so that um when my uh when when Joe Alexander if he if he ever has gone to my website well, he, he, may, he may have not I don't know but that just he he remembers so that when they're thinking about letting people go he's like ah may we hold him on <laughs> maybe may, may, may we keep him on board he, he got that he got that sweet silver clio right and also like post purchase evaluation like did we do the right okay yeah, yeah, yeah maybe. it's like oh okay maybe all right all so right. if you feel okay and you know you're not the first person to communicate that feeling of sort of like i don't know humble embarrassment and yeah. what 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 would, what would make you feel more proud for me to say that like you know Neil is a guy who's worked hard and he has two gorgeous young daughters and he's set up a life for himself and that makes you like so what do you if, are you proud of the awards are you more proud of the life you set up for yourself what have, are, do you ever stand back and 
question your success or gauge your success or how to, we'll talk a little bit about like that yeah uh I, 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 yes. I mean, I think everybody has, if, if does a self-evaluation. Um, you know, as, as far as how do I process it all? I, I think I, I know the right way to process it. I don't know if it's what I actually do. And mm. that is to, um, I think the, the right way to take all this is to, uh, uh appreciate it. Um, don't push it away. Certainly. Um, uh, enjoy it, but don't be, um, motivated solely by it. Because I think the thing about awards and you can insert a lot of things into that blank, but we're talking about awards is it's somebody else putting a value on your work. And Mm. in a lot of ways, your personal worth, because we have so much of ourselves tied up in our work. And I think that once you give that power over to somebody, um, it, it, it can be crushing, <laughs> you know, sure. because it cuts both ways. There's going to be plenty of years. I had plenty of years before the last few, and I will have plenty after where uh, I get diddly squat. And so does that mean I failed that year? Because, you know, a group of people in, you know, Bermuda or wherever uh, didn't didn't like what I did. Does that mean it was a bad year? I hope not. Pretty well said. Um, but like I said, I, I'm pretty sure that's the right way to process it. I don't know if I always do. Right. So, so, all right. Do you do you fist pump when you win as much as you you know kind of self flagellate when you don't? Like, I mean, are you hard on yourself when you have a down year? Or are you hard on yourself at all? Or you, I I gotta think you're more even keel than you're giving yourself credit for. Yeah, no, no, no. I would say it's definitely on even keel. Well, just because you know I went I I you know spent a lot of years um, you know early in my career. Um, not get anything or th- there were a lot of merits on the front right, end right. Um, which which was kind of you know like bridesmaid sort of bridesmaid scenario I disagree. so I disagree um, I don't I, think they're bridesmaids okay well yeah it was it was like it's like a thumbs up now, I, well okay I honestly believe that a merit is basically attaboy <laughs> I think they're all attaboys because like what's the difference yeah it's, well okay well you're right but like I said that's it's not like it's not actually like a race where like the first one to the finish line wins and no. gets a goal because a gold wins because Somebody was more adamant about that being ahead of something else. Yeah. Well, it's again, it's why it's why it's all sort of arbitrary. So right. handing your self worth over to a room full of people in an exotic location is probably right. That's, re- it's trouble. Right. The listeners, Neil's referring to the when the judges go on their boondoggle weeks to go judge the award show at a beach resort, and that's basically determining that should never determine the destiny or self-worth of the creatives who did the work that they're judging. Mm-hmm. But let's talk about the other things in that blank. So you said award shows shouldn't be the, the, the sort of third-party litmus test. What else? Is it salary? Is it title? Because, I mean, what ultimately, who do you ultimately answer to day to day? And this gets philosophical, and you may not feel comfortable asking these questions. I think it's, it's like we stand back and we think what's important. I guess what's important mm-hmm. is sort of the question. Oh well, I mean, this—it's a predictable answer. But what's important to me is my family. Right. Yeah, that's that's really there. There's there's nothing there's nothing even close. Right. Okay. Um. Is so it, I, I could. Sorry, that's so cut and dry. I don't. We don't need to. We don't need to push up. Push it. So all right. So the work that you've done has. A, I don't think your work you've done has a style. I think it's all intelligent. But a lot of it is funny. Um, are you funny? Um, do you think that you're a funny writer? Do do you, do, are you a funny, are you, do you take pride in the, in your Facebook posts and anything else that you do? Like, or do you feel, do you feel comfortable? You, in other words, I guess where I'm trying to get to is, do you feel like that advertising is allowing you to be, have you hit a place, are you at a place where you can be who you are with your sense of humor, your sort of. Yeah. Uh, well, it's interesting. Makes sense the question? Yeah, no, no, no. I, 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 I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting the gist. I'm getting the gist of it. Um, I would say, uh, my book when I got out of the circus wasn't funny. I think there was some sort of funny things in there, but it was definitely, I, you wouldn't look at it and say like, you know, this guy, what a jokester. Right. Um, I, I think I was probably more under the like clever umbrella. Right. I'd say that's right. You know? Yeah. Um, but, uh, after I got to, uh, Martin really, and, and then was able to really like spread my wings on, um, on Geico, um, mm-hmm. by getting that opportunity. Um, I think then it, that was only really when it became clear to me that I could 
be a decent comedy writer. Um, and I think luckily, um, and apologies to your podcast listeners, I'm, I think I'm funnier on paper. That's kind of my question. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think I'm definitely funnier on paper. Mm -hmm. Um, just because I like to think about stuff and I like to craft it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it never comes out of my, (laughs) my mouth (laughs) the way, uh, as, as good as it, as it does when I'm able to, um, you know, really, really like go to the, go to the copywriting coal mines and, um, try and, you know, get that diamond out. Well, that, that, that's kind of the reason I asked. Yeah. Because I feel like... Because I'm not funny in person. Because you're, you've never made me laugh. No, not about you at all. Because <laughs> I feel like people who are funny think that's enough. Oh, yeah. And I think people who feel like they're not funny can't be funny. So I, I, feel, I think that you are like a lot of creatives that I admire. And I like to put myself in the same category. We realize that when we have an idea, it's sort of like we've, we, we've now... The truck dumped a bunch of bricks mm-hmm. on, the, on the doorstep that we now we have to move into the place and build with the bricks. Yeah. So the idea is basically the raw material from which we now have to go to work. Mm-hmm. And I think that there's that the reason why people win awards and people have successful careers is that they they realize that there's that that step of of labor that being funny on paper is our job. And yeah. I, I it's interesting to hear you say it the way you said it and, and it, I'm not saying you're not funny. Uh, no, I know, I'm, I'm, I know, I know. Qualifying that. But it's a it's a craft and it's work and it's not as easy as it looks like it is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So let's talk a, a little, get a little granular on on actually the job and some get work. as granular as you want because I don't leave till tomorrow. <laughs> this is going to be what's the longest podcast you've ever done? Oh, 50 something hours. <laughs> 50 I don't think something. I got to leave before then. <laughs> fifty something minutes. Okay. Um, no, it's, I was talking in the hall with. Um, but Jake Tannery, he wanted to ask the question in forum, but it, I don't think that was the right forum for it. He said, okay, so you had said that you guys were working on the Geico Unskippable Spot. And for the listeners who haven't done what I nicely, I thought, very nicely asked at the beginning of the podcast, to just go on the website. It doesn't really take – it's free. It's completely free to go to neilwilliams.com and watch the, the to watch the pre-roll Unskippable of the family that freezes and the dog that's on the table. Mm-hmm. So you had said that when you guys had that idea that had a million views in 24 hours and 10 million views in three days, and it's just insane, that it didn't, it wasn't a eureka moment, right? That that didn't, mm-hmm. you weren't like, that's it, we've got it. Yeah. So talk a little bit about how that evolved to be the piece that was made and the campaign that sold and um, what it felt like throughout that process, just to get a sense of how it is behind the scenes coming up with a great piece of creative. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I like I said in forum, um, that that was generated within a, a a great body of work that we presented. It wasn't like we came up with it and we're like, "Yep, that's it. That's all we're going in with." We because it looks it. like that. Because I think students look at yeah. this. It looks yeah. like oh, he did that one. That's the one he did. He made that. That's- yeah. I mean, I would say very very rarely does an idea ever um, rise to the top in such a in such a fashion that you're like, that's it every now and again it does. Um, but that was certainly not the case. Um, even though it's, you know, probably the, I mean, in air quotes, the best thing I've done. Um, I mean, the way, like I said, we went about it the way, hold on. It's an air quotes because the thing that you like the best is still sitting somewhere in a file on your computer. Yeah. Yeah. Or, 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's the best because it exists. When, you know, when, if I get introduced on a podcast, which has happened once as of today, <laughs> uh, they, then they would call me like, Oh, the, un, the unskippable guy. Yeah, the guy who made that. Right. Yeah. 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 So, so that's, you know, that's attached to me and I'm, I love it. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a great piece of work and I'm lucky to have been able to work on it. But yeah, so that's, it's, it's, it's the air quotes. I think, you know, I, I hope there's more out there. So um, how did it survive? And is there, is there a story about how it got sold? Yeah. I mean, you know, to, to the client's credit, um, when they saw it, they were, they were probably more into it than we were. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, cause they are, they are wonderful. Um, What's the background? What are these guys backgrounds? I mean, why do they see an idea? Cause you guys did not shoot that spec, right? Mm-mm, so no. how, how do they see an idea and, and, and appreciate it? You know what? It, I mean, it, it, it is a talent because they're even there are creatives who can't have that much. Mm-hmm. You know, who, kind of bosses. can't can't have that. Um, they don't have that much imagination to be able to say, um, you know, look at a script on paper, 
we're going to make people freeze and trust us. It's going to be funny for a minute, mm-hmm. you know, in like an entire minute. That, uh, right. And, um, yeah, but they, but they did. And I, I think it, you know, it all comes down to trust. We've had Geico for 20 plus years now. Um, and we've grown together. Um, you know, like I said, I think they, they started off like number 10 or something in, in the industry and now they're two hmm. and that, they are 100%, you know, um, you know, behind marketing and they see the power in it. Um, and it's just been a great relationship. I find it fascinating just as a, as a student of marketing, how they almost change the category to the soft drink model where soft drinks is really all marketing Mm -hmm. Yeah, to think of it as a marketing opportunity to say, it's not what we sell, it's how we sell it and how we tell our story and what the brand means. Very, right. very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, you know, it's, it's that is classic marketing when you need it most, when you have a parody product. Um, I think, you know, with, with Geico there, obviously they lean heavily, heavily into the savings message, but mm-hmm. now there's a lot more, um, competitors in the market who, you know, have different models and can, deliver on on the low price but you know you're obviously you're giving some things up with that Mm -hmm. um but they've uh they've they've stuck to that uh that that messaging expanded it as well um talking about the other things they do um but um but yeah i mean god 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 bless them yeah all right so let's talk a little bit about your eight years so we all know this we all know everybody knows that Everybody knows that people don't stay at an agency for eight years, especially yeah. at their second job or really barely your second job. Yeah. Um, what what is the what has the job evolved to? Uh, how has it changed? How is your um, what keeps you excited? Um, mm-hmm. We'll start there. I have a couple follow up questions. Okay. Yeah. Eight years is a long time. Um, you know, I I th- I think. It, it it's different every year. <laughs> How so? Um, well, just uh, working on different clients, um, and uh, you know my my role has changed. I started there, I think, just as a straight up copywriter. Then became, you know, got slowly got promotions every two or three years. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, did, did the job change when you got promoted? Not a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's that's a that's a good thing about the Martin Agency. It's a very it's a very flat structure. Um, that, uh, you know, some people like, some people don't. I think it, it, it works for me. It's kind of cool that, you know, um, I could be partnered with the GCD tomorrow mm-hmm. on a, just on a project. Um, and, you know, for all um, intents and purposes, we're just a copywriter and art director. Yeah, it's really great. No big deal. Do teams report to you now? Do you have juniors under you in your... in your? Yeah, not we, we don't hire um, many juniors. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but yes, I've, I've got... Teen, I, I'm creative director on uh, Stoli, Vodka, Chips Ahoy, um ping golf and uh and then and pretty much exclusively a a writer on geico although i have creative directed uh um a few things Mm -hmm. for them so what have been the what have been the highlights that you could look back at your time so far at martin that were sort of either fun Mm -hmm. or career meaningful what were not counting the the birth of your two daughters what 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 have been been the highlights of your professional side professional side well i mean obviously i mean unskippable it'd be I mean that that was when, a, okay. So when was that? When did it feel? When did it feel like wow, it's awesome? Like what was the? You know what I mean? Was yeah. It, the day after it, it hit a million. Like when was that moment? I, I mean, it was all kind of gravy. I, I mean, as soon as it, um, you know, like I said, Carson Daly talked did like a two minute bit on the Today Show so about it. Was a it. week of yeah. awesome. Yeah, it was great. And so even that was like wonderful. Like it, it permeated pop culture. It's it's all gravy from here, and then you know as the show season starts progressing along, it picks up some things, and then mm-hmm. you know ne- never in a million years would have ever expected to win a Grand Prix, much less for that. Um, because like I talked about in the forum, it did everything wrong. Yeah, I disagree. I did everything wrong from what had come before. But yes, it, but it understood. But before. it understood. It's it understood behavior. You talked about this. You talked mm-hmm. about the fact that you're. I love your I love what you said too. That like you have basically race car driver reflexes waiting for that skip now to mm-hmm, go, mm-hmm. and it, it did everything right because it knew the behavior, it knew where it lived, and you you had also mentioned that one of the reasons why it's such a great account to work on is that they have the media money to do those very specific tactical 
tactical from a media perspective, executions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yes, it did everything wrong. It put all the stuff at the beginning. It's not supposed to be a, a giant logo on there the whole time. Yeah. That's why it worked though. It's, it was off. It was like off. Mm-hmm. It was like, what is going on? Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. So, so I mean, that, that obviously was, was a big, was a big professional moment. Um, but there are a lot of other ones that are kind of a little bit more under the radar, but that were meaningful to me. Um, uh, I think winning Stoli was, was very, um, fulfilling creatively because it's one of the only things where I've literally, you know, with my partner, um, Darcy, who graduated oh, yeah. from the circus. Is he still there? No, no. He's at, uh, he's at Crispin now right. doing great things. Darcy O'Neill. Yep. Was just out there. It's a good guy. He is. Um, so we created this thing out of nothing. He gave me one of the coolest things I own. What's that? He, his father, when he went to school here, was a chairman of Molson. They had like a part mm-hmm. ownership of yeah. the Toronto Maple Leafs. And yeah. he went to the, like the World Cup of Hockey and went to the manager's equipment room and pinched a, a pristine, one-of-a-kind, like Team Canada uh, game jersey for me, a Nike game jersey with a yeah. fight strap in the back, like the real thing. Right. And it's like this, they only wore it once. It was like, I guess the national team used to be the team that won like the championship. So mm-hmm. like the one year, the Montreal Maroons represented Canada. So okay. the uniform was there, like this mustard green with this gorgeous, big embroidered maple leaf on it. Mm-hmm. He, he got me one of those. Yeah. It's pretty cool. That's pretty sweet. I'll always love him for it. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So what, I mean, what were you guys doing on Stoli together? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well we, we, we were, no, 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 that's great. That, um, and that's, 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 that's classic Darcy too. He's got, he's got connections. Yeah. Um, but yeah, well, we were working on the pitch and, um, you know, again, it's just a, just a big uh, cluster, a gazillion teams are on it. Um, and then out of that process, just to have an idea that becomes a lead idea and then to win the business with it, um, is, is just so amazing. It's so gratifying. Um, cause then you have this thing that is literally your baby. And, um, there was a specific, the very, you know, specific look, feel, and then tone of voice. Um, that, um, it, it was, like I said, it was, it was like, it was as close to giving birth <laughs> to, it, to a brand, a brand idea as, as I think I've come. Is it produced campaign? What was in the pitch? Did they, or how much did it evolve after you uh, won it? It didn't evolve a lot. Like the look and the feel was, it was locked really down. Really cool. It was, it's like the bottles that just yeah. the label yeah. indicates the bottle's not really anything indicated yeah, in the image. Yeah. The type is really beautiful. It's very like constructivist. It's, it's, it's really re- nice. It's Russian, rever- it's referential without saying we're from Russia. It's, yeah, it's exactly right. It's very cool. Darcy also had one of the most, one of the funniest ads I've ever seen in school. Okay. For uh, Playmate Coolers. Okay. So, and his art direction was really cool. They got stencil type and they actually bought coolers and they painted the headlines through stencil spray paint on the cooler and shot it. And that was the whole ad. Oh, yeah. And one of them said, um, a cooler is like your girlfriend. Never leave it alone at a party when it's full of beer. <laughs> and they That's would, a good one. And they took it around. Who's the writer on that? Right. I don't remember who the writer was. God, I should know that. Maybe John Angelopoulos. I don't know. So they would take it. They had it at parties and people were like, where'd you get that? They're yeah. offering money for it. All right, speaking of offering money for stuff, uh-huh. all right, so I'm assuming throughout this time, uh, you've been getting offers, phone calls from headhunters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, have you been tempted? Uh, how do you process that when it comes through? Yeah. Um, what's What goes through your mind when when that starts happening? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's always, uh, has always been a pretty steady stream, but that, that reached uh, reaches a fever pitch around Cannes the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's very, it's very seductive and very, you know, alluring and to be, to be feted and, and, and desired after. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, it's, it's hard, it's hard not to look. And I mean, I think everybody should look because mm-hmm. you should know, you should know what you're worth. You should know what's important too, right? Yeah. And, and, and honestly, I feel like a lot of the process of talking to people, um, looking around, thinking about it, um, has, has helped me really wrap my head around what I value and what I want out of my job. And, you know, um, right now, I mean, like I said, my, my family is number one and I, my wife is from Richmond. She's got a really good support network there. So that's, that's crucial. Um, and I am, you know, still getting great opportunities and, and loving what I'm doing at work. So with those two things on the table right now, 
I it's it's really right. tough. Right. Yeah. It's it's really it's 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 really tough. But you know things things change. They always do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I think you always have to kind of you know keep your head on a swivel, see what's going around. No, and yeah. like I said, know your street value. That's really uh, make huge. make sure you're getting your street value from your current mm-hmm. you know employer. Which like I said, you know. Joe is very supportive um, and, and and is great to, to work with, and, and Joe uh, Alexander. Yeah, Joe Alexander. I think that's great. That's a great point. I think it is really important to follow through on those things, and um, because the times that that's happened for me, you reevaluate what's important. You realize you may have it where you are, and it, I actually find that for a, a good long time after that, I recommit myself to where I am. Not that I needed that necessarily, mm-hmm. but it helps me sort of. Recommit, I guess, sort of get fired up. Yeah, well, I'm, I've got uh, an interesting um, anecdote to that end. When when I left YNR to go to Martin, I was fretting it. I was so worried that I was making a bad decision because there was some good momentum at YNR at mm-hmm. the time. Like Tony Granger, um, uh, uh, Scott and Ian were the ECDs. They were really getting on the awards train. Um, and uh, like th- things were going, things were going well for people there, and a lot of the people that I was working with. And I was like, "Shit, did I just, did I just right. jump off, you know, the gravy train?" And uh, and, and I was really worried about it. Um, but you know, I mean, in the end, it all works out. I guess I look back and I think like, "Oh God, I was just so worried and fretting so much." And you know, if if I hadn't have done that, I wouldn't be where I am now. There's, um, a, lot, there's a lot of gravy too. So yeah, yeah, there's a lot of gravy to go go around. Mm-hmm. There's more. There's more gravy than biscuit. I don't even know if that makes sense, but if you're good, there is. It prob- yeah, if you're good, I, I, I think if you're good, there is. If don't overthink that. That one kind of falls apart the more you think about it. Plate full of biscuits. <laughs> um, so, what have been some of the frustrations? And you mentioned one in forum, but what? Because I mean, one of the things that I that I try to avoid on these conversations, and I know people have talked about this at forum, is like we always get these guys in here who are like have won 35 awards and they won a can lion or you know titanium lion or best in show. It's like, what about like the rest of the bell curve of all the people who are just kind of going to work with their with their like metal lunch boxes and their hard hats? So, mm-hmm. what have been sort of the setbacks? I don't want to say failures because I think that you know that's it's not that we're failing. There's setbacks and frustrations. Yeah. Well, I think it, it was what I was getting at today is you know you got to fail up, mm-hmm. right? You know, and so with every with every failure just learn something that'll make you better the next time you get put in that situation. That's a very generic piece of advice, but it is very true. It's probably why it is generic. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I mean, like I said, I, I, uh, before, um, before un, unskippable, I, I, I really did. I, I felt like, well, you know, maybe awards aren't for me. Um, you know, it's a dangerous head to get into. Yeah. I was just like, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna, you know, just keep doing smart, clever work. Maybe it'll never work out, but, uh, you know, cause I, I mean the couple, like a print ad and a poster thing had won some, some stuff, but mm-hmm. it wasn't like the big, like game changing, mm-hmm. uh, type, type campaign. Um, but, uh, but I was definitely in that place where I was like, you know what, maybe it's not for me. Um, and I, and I, I, I sort of gotten over it and passed it. Um, but, uh, work, work, work had lost, right? You had a great campaign that lost that didn't get bought and then you had to bring it back. Oh, right. Yes. Well with, yes, that, that, the, the first big, uh, Geico campaign I did, that's why I talked about in forum. Did you know? Um, yeah, yeah. Just showing that, showing that the first time, getting it all the way up the, up the chain over there at Geico and then just it, it, uh, it losing out to, um, to a, a better campaign. That they then ran with for a couple of years, it was um, it was tough because, you know, a lot of the spots that ended up running, you know, they were they were in that original iteration, mm. um, so they're good. They were good, and I guess that's why it's uh, life's not fair. Well, and advertising really isn't fair. I think it's not fair. I think it's also. <laughs> I think it also takes a lot longer for shit to go down than you think it does. So, like, you, you had to sit for two years watching another campaign when you felt like you had a great piece of work on it. Then you got to represent with some tweaks, and maybe you were actually a better creative at that point. Maybe you could write better scripts. Mm-hmm. But, like, you know, two years sounds like forever when you're, like, 22 years old. But, like, right. two years in an eight-year, 10-year, 15, 20-year career is part of the process. Yeah. You know, that's kind of how it goes. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. So... Like I said, there's going to be plenty of ups and downs um, along along the way. So, 
I do want to say that you said something I thought was profound. You talk about having passion and patience and that mm-hmm. they kind of are like, they're almost like conjoined twins. Yeah. Right? They're so similar. Well, they say uh, uh, patience is passion tempered. Patience is passion tempered. Interesting. Hmm. Think right. about that. Wrap your head around that, listeners. Chew on that for a little bit. So talk to me about why the good bosses that you had have had were good bosses. Talk about your favorite creative director and why yeah. were they good. Well, I mean, I haven't had a ton, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the good thing about staying at some place, one place for a while where there's not a ton of turnover. <clears throat> I've learned I've learned something from everybody I've worked with. Um, and honestly, some of the people I've worked with um, who were not so good at their job probably taught me more mm-hmm. um, about what not to do. Or just making mental notes. When I'm in this position in the future, I don't want to do that. So many people have said that on this podcast. Yeah? Yeah. It's like because, oh, it's just, it's just, I think it's like, you you remember childhood trauma? Because it mm-hmm. affected you emotionally and, and the bad bosses, like, or the bad things that some bosses can do. Like, yeah. he taught me in the hall. Yeah. Like, I shouldn't tell my son that he's lazy. I should tell him that what he did was lazy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Getting parenting advice. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's like. That you pick up, you, you, so have you always been like, I think it's really important, I don't know if I'm asking you a question or just making a comment, that's really important to be observant and sit, pay attention to how people, I guess we all kind of do that, right? We all kind of look up and say, well, how is he doing that? How does that work for him? Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I think, you know, one, one, of, um, one of the things that um, everybody who I've, I've worked with and admired at, at the Martin Agency has had in common is that they... Um, empower the people below them. That's, yeah. uh, I think, I mean, the, uh, both the GCDs that I work with on Geico, Wade Alger, Steve Bassett, 100%, Joe Alexander, the CCO, totally the same way. Um, great. Just, you, you don't, I'm not constantly thinking when I'm working on something, well, is blank going to like it? Right, that's, that's the worst. I've been yeah, in both, yeah. Because, I've been in both of those positions. Yeah. I can tell you they're profoundly different. Yeah, you just want, you want to, you, you, you should only have one filter. You know, it's like as soon as you start putting two on there, shit gets a little wonky. So that um, that, that is such a great place to be operating from. And it's a safe place. You know, they say fear makes you stupid. And I think that's totally true. If you're afraid about, uh, you know what your creative director is going to say, or that he's going to fly off the handle at you because you showed him something that you know uh, wasn't to his taste. It, it's it, it's it's not it, like I said, it's not a safe place. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, so thinking back so far, um, you know, a quarter of the way through a great career, mm-hmm. what what, oh. <laughs> what personal trait? What what is it about you so far? Do you think has served you well? Helps you be successful? I, I'm going to go with the with the assumption on the question that you're successful. Okay, I, I'm, I'm not going to. Uh, so, okay, we'll assume that. What okay. pers- what personal trait? What is it about you that you think that's been valuable? Um. Well, I mean, you brought up passion and patience. Um. I think those are those are important. These are learned things. You think patience? Uh, yes. Or do you, were you generally patient? Yes, I think I'm. I think I'm a fairly patient person about about some things. I find this fascinating because I think that there's people that are could be here sitting here with me right now, have won all these awards. Will say that their best strength is that they're <laughs> that they're impatient. Yeah, I think it's just two sides of the same coin in some it ways. Is. But patience. How has patience served you well? Um. Well, I think it's just it's not giving up on things. Mm. Um, and digging in and, 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 and getting, you know, like you said, you got, you got, you you put on your helmet, you go into those, those ad mines and you got to get in there. And if you're not passionate or patient, you're, you're not going to find the good stuff. I think it was you who said, I, I I remember it again, if you didn't take it, because I think it's pretty good, but you know, yeah, holding up a pen and, and and you don't know what part of the pen, the, uh, the, the good ideas in or the headline Mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, sometimes you just gotta, you gotta write to let things dry. You gotta work that thing. Yeah. Down. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's, that's where the, that's where the patience come, comes from. But yeah, it's, it's, it's semantics. You could say that impatience could lead you to the same place. Well, um, impatience is pressure. I think that like, and that's not to say that pressure doesn't help you. Like for me, I need pressure. I need a deadline. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that the deadline forces me to shovel more. 
Yeah. Shovel quicker, shovel more. Yeah. In less time. It's probably the same amount of shoveling. It's just I do it more yeah. intensely. And, and, then, and, and, and then I would also say uh, this is less aspirational, but probably true. Um, competitiveness and insecurity. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Those, those, they're, they're unhealthy drivers, I think. But um, they definitely well, can, uh, fuel. It may be unhealthy. Well, insecurity is that permanent? I mean, do you ever? Yeah, ugh. I think so. I think it is. I think you can wrap your head around it, deal with it better the longer you get along. But it's, it was funny. Um, uh, one, one of the students um, stopped me uh, after the forum, and we were talking about it. And you know, she was sort of talking about to to, to the effect of. You know, I'm not confident in 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 my skills, and will this go away? And um, you know, how did how did you feel when you were here? Um, you know, were you confident in your skills? And and I said, you know what? Uh, every brief I get, I feel like this is this is the one where they're going to find me out. Right. This is the one where it's just all going to fall apart like a house of cards. And so I think, you know, whatever, 12 years into an ad career, if it's still happening, I have a feeling it's never going to go away. Yeah. It just gets, sm- the voice gets a little, like a little, think, a little more dulcet. I but. think the roadmap to solutions starts off as a blank page every single time. Mm-hmm. So knowing that there's no roadmap is paralyzing and terrifying. And it isn't until you start building and shoveling, you can use the shoveling analogy with your partner, that you start, it starts to, it almost like the, uh, Marauders map when they first tap the wand to it and it mm-hmm. appears it's like it doesn't at that first moment like oh crap it's like this is just a piece of paper yeah. until you start to figure out how to decode your own sort of solution and that can be terrifying I find it the most exciting thing but God I could see it being like yeah there's no way there's no, no there's nothing there. this yeah. never going to be anything on this this is the time we'll see that and I I would God it would be so great if I could revel in that moment of. Who knows where we're going to end up? This is going to be great. I don't think I'd do that. I think I'd just say like, the str- I just read the strategy over and over and yeah. over and over until flowers start growing out of the characters on the page. Mm-hmm. And I say, well, what does that look and smell like, you know? Yeah. Um, this is getting kind of, that's weird, but it made sense to me. Okay. <laughs> I get, um, it. I get so it. Some of the other stuff I, I, I loved, your, uh, the ACS um, and the Donate Life work. Can you talk a little bit about, does that feel to you... ACS, American Cancer Society. Yeah. Um, the birthday pieces are just real. It's so simple. Is mm-hmm. that something that you had a fresh brief on? Was that? Yeah. Well, and and I, I did not work on Donate Life. Just okay. To, just to be clear. Okay. I wish I, God, I wish I did. Okay. Because that's a great, it's a great video. And, um, but the, uh, uh, but I'm happy to talk about it. But ACS. So um, you have, let me explain to the listeners who, again, were too lazy to go look at the spots. You've got <laughs> famous people singing happy birthday. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, there were two parts to it. There was a music part mm-hmm. and there was an art part. Okay. So um, for music, it was famous people singing happy birthday. And then you there was a customizable aspect to it. So you could customize the video and send it to a friend, um, you know, for happy birthday, birthday wishes. And this is for survivors, but it's also just for the fact that we have another year to celebrate and Cancer Society is celebrating the fact that we are here. More uh, birthdays. Another year. The official yeah, sponsor birth- of More Birthdays more, was great. Was what the agency had created. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was an art part where it was um, uh, uh, famous artists um, sort of in, took their in, own interpretation on More Birthdays and created uh, wrapping paper out of it mm-hmm. that you could buy. All proceeds cool. go to cancer, awesome. fighting cancer. Um, so, so yeah, that, that was a great one. The, um, more birthdays, which was honestly probably the coolest part of that thing. Just that line of American Cancer Society becoming the official sponsor of birthdays. Like how, what a great way to turn an inherently negative, I love it. you know, shitty thing into something positive. And mm-hmm. like, let's not get hung up on how many people die a year. Let's get hung up on how many people are living and how they're getting more birthdays mm-hmm. like that was that that to me was the real it's amazing unlock unlocking moment um and i did not do that yeah. so but first pers- personal question does it feel different for you working on the, that work than other work does it feel more and you can i don't, I don't want to lead you yeah well um or is it sort of like it's an opportunity it's another no no, no, no. i definitely I, I definitely got emotionally invested in that 
that was um because i mean with anybody i mean that hits close to home because we've all you know had people we love or have known who have had cancer and beaten it or you know passed away um and so, so I, I yes i think and again i worked on that with darcy mm-hmm. um there were there were points where it, it was a very labor intensive um campaign um creative labor just getting that off the ground and coordinating so many things at once with famous people and artists and did, a you, web, meet, did you meet beebs a website i met the beebs i touched mm-hmm. his hair <laughs> I did <laughs> um, at the at the well, Vermont these, State Fair in Burlington. But that's where that was shot on mm-hmm. a, in, into the empty arena, empty outdoor space, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah, but, um, and meeting Rihanna was cool. Amazing. She's gorgeous, amazing. Yeah, um, but uh, but yeah, I, I, I there were times where I was uh, I really wanted to go home. Um, we 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 had a room that we called the Cancer Cabin that Darcy and I kind of hold up in. And we didn't leave for like three months. Mm. It was horrible. It got real musky in there. Yeah, was, but then kind of it, it gave me a second wind to think, you know what? If this goes well, if this is this much better and we can get X amount more money to fight cancer, it's like shit. Nice. Like I, I, I got we got to stay. We got to figure right, this out. That's great. That's really great. Um, so we're, we're wrapping up. Okay. So knowing what you know now. Mm-hmm. You could go back in time to the day you graduated from school, going up to New York to YNR with Jason. What would you What would you whisper in young Neil's ear? What do you wish you'd known? I don't. I don't know. I mean, I I I feel like anything anything I would tell myself, um, I feel like would would change where I am now. Mm. And I, I, you know, like I I love my wife and my two girls and you, you wouldn't want future Neil whispering something in your ear now would my you? job you, you know and I like what I'm working on now and I don't know I mean there are a lot of things that I wish I had known sooner but I feel like sometimes the the feeling around in the dark is what makes it happen and I'm also about uh, three quarters of the way through the um the most recent uh, Harry Potter book uh, which is all about traveling through time and and screwing around with it. So mm. I think that that as well as the uh, uh, Back to the Future trilogy has taught me um, it's best to just leave it alone. Yeah, some lessons. I don't know if that's the answer you wanted, but I wanted your answer. That's exactly <laughs> the answer I wanted. That's okay. exactly the answer that the listeners have paid for. Okay, <laughs> they didn't pay anything. Okay, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for having me. This has been so much fun to. Uh, to talk to the students and um, talk to you and catch up. And I mean, I feel very selfish because I spoke mostly about myself on this thing. That's the point. I know. We understand this. We understand what we're doing, right? Yeah, Yeah. I know. I know. But, but I, I I was happy to learn about the whole, you know, the world cup Jersey thing. That was, what's that? I feel like I got the, the, you got the, the, Oh yeah. The the hockey world cup. Yeah. 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 It's pretty cool. Yeah. Darcy's a decent guy. Learned some stuff about you and Darcy. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much. And listeners, thank you for listening this far into this conversation. If you want to check out Neil's work and reach Neil, it's neilwilliams.com. Um, you can just type that into the into the URL bar on your browser. It'll take you there as soon as you hit the return button. You can always reach me at Dan's Podcast at Mac.com. If you haven't already liked the Facebook page, please do so. And also, if you've got five seconds, leave a review on the iTunes store. If you've enjoyed this conversation, there's some currency in those reviews, evidently. So I appreciate that. Um, we'll see you again in two weeks. Until then, thank you once again, Neil. Oh, you're you're so welcome. Thanks for thanks for dealing with me, and thanks for being such a great uh, a great host. You really kept it clipping along. I feel like we've been here for three minutes. Yep, good. That's awesome. Excellent, yeah. listeners. It's been longer, but we'll see you in two weeks. Till then, see you later. Bye.